Hello, good afternoon, happy new year, and welcome to Dialed In. I'm Alex Cologne, this is Sasha Segan, and we are part of PC Mag's mobile team, and every week we bring to you some mobile news, rumors, things that we're working on. And since it's the very beginning of 2018, what we want to do now is look back on 2017 at some of our favorite phones that we reviewed. Mm -hmm. uh, and then we're also going to look forward to later this year, at, yep. well, to the end of this year, um, to what we think will be the best phones of 2018. Yes. Um, if you're watching right now on Facebook Live, feel free to leave some questions. Uh, we'll read them out and answer them for you. If you're watching later on YouTube, please like and subscribe. So let's just start with, um, we have a pile of phones here. Yes. We have, I think, nearly all the phones that are on our favorites list of Except the year. Except for one, yeah. Except for one of them. Um, let's just run down. I mean, I would say, we didn't necessarily pick an overall top phone above them all. But as far as Android phones go, mm -hmm. I'm going to say that the Galaxy S8 is probably our top pick. Of the yeah, year. and I would say even more than, here's the Galaxy S8. This is, uh, Galaxy S8 is, is my phone. This is the phone that I use on a day-to-day -day basis. This is my Galaxy S8. Uh, you can see my widgets and stuff on it. Um, and uh, that is because even more than the Galaxy Note 8, which is here, the Note 8 is a more powerful phone. Mm -hmm. But um, the S8's combination of size, price, and performance, I think, make it kind of perfect. Right. Yeah. So, um, but I mean, make no mistake, the Note 8 is also one of our favorite phones of the year. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, the Note 8 is, you know, a similar gorgeous build to the S8. It has that 2x zoom camera. Mm -hmm. uh, it has the pen. And uh, a lot of people like the pen. I like the pen. I like the pen to take notes with. Um, and it is as as pocketable and as usable as a phone of this giant, you know, six plus inch screen size can be. Right. Um, but uh, you know, when I when I was thinking about the overall, what do I personally love? You know, this is the one that just pops into my hand. Um, so what's interesting to me here is that we have two very similar Sam Samsung phones that are in yes. our favorites of the year. Now, Apple released a number of phones this year, yeah. um, and we have only decided to include one phone on this list. Yeah, and that was because I found the, uh, I found the, the iPhone 8 and 8 Plus to just be so incremental. Mm -hmm. You know, I didn't find that when we were reviewing the iPhone 8 and 8 Plus, um, I kept on looking at them and I kept on saying, you know what, the iPhone 7 is 549 bucks, and, and you can pretty much get what you get here for that, can't you? Right, so those two phones didn't make our list, but what did is the brand new iPhone 10. Yeah, yeah, and that is just because the iPhone 10, which I have right here, um, really does, I think, set the scene for iPhones to come. Mm -hmm. uh, there's a lot of features in this thing that feel kind of half-baked but they are the future. And that is the Face ID, which we've, of course, been seeing a lot of problems with. Right. But it's the first real large-scale use for an AR camera on a phone mm -hmm. uh, that we've seen. You know, Google Tango kind of appeared and failed. Right. You know, um, and uh, th the build is gorgeous. Uh, the cameras are great. Uh, the A11 processor, once again, like the iPhone 10 has a use for the A11 processor in that face recognition right. that you don't necessarily see as much on the iPhone 8 and 8 Plus. So someone who's buying a new iPhone this year, should they buy the iPhone 10 or, I mean, should they go for the 7? I mean, think? they should go either 10 or 7. And mm -hmm. the thing is there's a like $400 gap between these phones and it really depends on what budget class you're in. because. If, if you go for the 7, if you save your money, mm -hmm. then you're saving your money for the iPhone 11. Right. And it is, I feel like a lot of the kinks in the new features on the iPhone 10 are gonna get worked out on the 11. Mm -hmm. um, so another trend that we saw this year that I like is, um, what you'll notice is the four phones that we were just talking about all hover closer to $1,000 than they do to 500 even. Same thing with this one, yeah. Um, but. One of our favorite phones of the year was a very affordable phone. And that's the one which we don't have right here because we had to return it a while ago because it was from earlier this year. Right. And that's the Moto E4. Right. And I just love how Motorola has just been slamming it home over and over again uh, in terms of affordable quality. Mm -hmm. You know, I, if, if they have one flaw, it may be that they have too many affordable quality phones. It gets a little confusing. 
is they have the E4 and the E4 Plus and the G5 and the G5S and the G5S Plus, and you know, it, it, it gets a little confusing in terms of the nomenclature. Uh, oh, even nomenclature aside, it makes it hard for us when we're scoring these phones. When you know you have phones that are relatively close in price and features, uh, it makes it difficult to decide which one is you know the best. Yeah, I mean the reason I went for the E4 on this list, which is the lowest end of the bunch. Mm -hmm is just that it's it's delivering so much value for under $100 in many cases. Mm -hmm. And and uh, so there's a lot of people out there, even in America, who are saying, I need a functional smartphone, but I really don't have more than $100. Right. And Motorola is, Motorola is doing that without, I mean, they're doing that without the sort of spyware controversies we saw with Blue. Mm -hmm. They're doing that without being some like weird brand name with no support. They're doing that with a clean Android build. It is so nice, the clean Motorola Android build. Um, I mean, of course, if you buy the Amazon Prime versions, you're going to get the Amazon ads on it. Right. But um, aside from that, yeah, they are pretty uh, bloat free. Yeah, yeah. So it looks like we have a question. Do you feel that 2017 saw uh, a lot better phone releases than previous years? Hmm, was this a big year for phones is a question. And I'm, I'm, I'm thinking back through history now. Um, I think it was a more exciting year than 2016. Yeah, more exciting year than 2016, but uh, not more exciting than I would say uh, the, what was it, it was the, not more exciting than the iPhone 6 year. The iPhone 6 was a huge deal mm -hmm. when they sized up the iPhone. Right. You know, certainly not, uh, you know, not more exciting than, I don't know, the Galaxy S3 year, which mm -hmm. was like the first Galaxy that was like, whoa, Samsung's a thing. Um, the, the, the smartphone market, I feel like in general, is in a relatively stable place right now. Mm -hmm. It's relatively mature. We're going to see some radical new things happening as we get to more of this kind of AR world mm -hmm. and as we get to more as, as 5G launches in 2019. But I think we're, we're, in, a, we're in a less radical moment. Right. Um, so let's get back to a couple of the other phones on the table. Mm -hmm. um, another one of the higher priced Android phones that we have here is the LG V30 Plus. Yeah. Which you've just finished reviewing. Which I just finished reviewing. And I put this on here because um, it, it really shows it's, it's, a, it's a less celebrated phone. Um, but it has a lot of unusual good things going for it that not a lot of other people are doing. Mm -hmm. For instance, it really focuses on audio quality. Right. And I'm not an audiophile, okay? The the whole quad DAC thing doesn't really speak to me personally. Mm -hmm. But audiophiles love this phone, and it's something special that it's doing. And uh, the wide-angle camera on the back, once more, it's a less common use of dual cameras than Zoom. Right. But uh, my wife, for instance, has a G6, uh, the smaller LG phone. She loves that wide-angle camera, mm -hmm. especially for things like family selfies. Um, and so it's, it's, the V30 Plus shows a lot, oh, um, it's one of only two phones that can hit the maximum speeds on Sprint. Uh, and you took that out and you saw some pretty crazy speeds. Holy moly, yeah, yeah. I, I went around Manhattan and I was seeing like 130 megabits mm -hmm. on Sprint, which, which you don't expect on Sprint. You think Sprint is slow and then you get this phone specifically and you're like, whoa, we've opened up like the HOV lane on the highway for this <laughs> thing. Um, so I really like how um, I really like and I really want to encourage how LG is doing things differently. Mm -hmm. uh, speaking of differently, our final favorite phone of the year uh, is sort of an oddball here, and it is... It is the BlackBerry Key One. And uh, it's, it's, it's the last remaining keyboarded phone, you know? Um, I have been reviewing phones since 2003. Um, I mean, PC Mag has been reviewing phones since the 1990s. Mm -hmm. And uh, the entire time, there have been phones with keyboards, or pagers with keyboards, I guess. Right. Um, and, and there are people who love their physical keyboard. There's people who, who can do things on their physical keyboard that they couldn't do on a touch screen, whether it be you know typing with your eyes closed, typing while not looking, mm -hmm. um, you know, real, real one-handed usage like this. Uh, and it's just so nice to see, finally, the physical keyboard um, 
in the physical keyboard form factor in a modern Android phone that doesn't have a lot of compromises. Mm -hmm. And it's not, you know, it's not a super high-end phone. It's not the fastest thing out there. Um, but for people who want that keyboard, um, that niche, it really hit the spot. Right. So there you go. I mean, you pretty much have it all. You have your high-end iPhone. Yeah. You have your low-cost Android phone. Yeah. And you even have a keyboard. You even have a keyboard. And I really hope BlackBerry stays out there with those keyboards. Uh, so before we get into our predictions for 2018, let's take another question. That was going to be the question. What, what do you think uh, 2018 has in store? Ah, perfect timing. Yeah. Um, okay, so let's just go with it. I mean, yeah. we're, we're going to be, we're working on rumors here. So. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, so some phones <laughs> I'm really looking forward to in 2018. The first one has already been announced. We are almost certainly going to see it in its final form at CES. Mm -hmm. It's the Huawei Mate 10 Pro for AT&T. And this is a big deal because Huawei is such a big deal in the rest of the world, and they have not been able to break into the US. Mm -hmm. um, the Mate 10 Pro uses a Category 18 modem. It is the fastest LTE device potentially in the world. But when we tested the international Mate 10 Pro here in the US, mm -hmm. it was stuck in the slow lane because it wasn't tuned for our networks. Right. Okay, it uses a Huawei processor that looks really good. You know, we, we, don't, have any, we don't have a lot of phones in the US using Huawei processors. Mm -hmm. So, um, but, and, and I think we're gonna see at CES this phone announced for AT&T. And if so, this is a potential new major player at every level, you know, as an OEM, as a chip maker, as a modem maker, you know, they could really upset Samsung and LG and Alcatel in our market. Um, I think if it is an AT&T exclusive, I wouldn't, I'm not as hyped up on it as you are. Yeah, I just want to have hope, you know? Right. I want to have hope that somebody will shake things up. I like it when things are shaken up. I like when, I like it when everyone's on their toes. No, absolutely, but yeah. that's why it would be nice to see it on every camera. Yeah, exactly, absolutely, absolutely. Okay, so uh, second uh, phone I'm looking out for a little further in the future is the rumored Galaxy X Foldable. Okay, um, not the Galaxy S9. Mm -hmm. The S9 is gonna be nice, but everything we're hearing about the S9 is not huge changes from the S8. Mm -hmm. um, don't throw away your S8. But uh, last year, the head of Samsung Mobile told me they were working on a foldable phone, and there have been rumors about this foldable phone for a year now. Mm -hmm. And uh, the Z it will not be like the ZTE Axon M, which is the awkward foldable phone. Right. Uh, this, like all the concepts we see of this phone are of this kind of beautiful, curved, truly foldable, flexible display device. And just in terms of form factor, you know, radically unlike anything else that's out there. So can it fold completely shut? That's what we're thinking, maybe. Yeah. Yeah, because I mean, the closest thing that we've seen to that then would be LG's Flex phone. Yeah. Um, and that was just a little, little bit bendy. a little bit, yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, a, like a phone that actually you know, if it hinges, even if it hinges in the middle with no bezel, mm -hmm. um, because what really breaks the concept on something like the Axon M is that bezel in the middle. Right. So uh, Galaxy X Foldable, I'm so looking forward to seeing if, if they pull that off. Um, and now I'm sure people are wondering, uh, will there be any new Apple phones? And of course there will be. <clears throat> and I didn't want to put the iPhone 11 on the list because it's almost too obvious. I want to put the iPhone SE too. All right, because, iPhone SE too. Yeah, because the SE is, I feel like that is like Apple's sleeper phone. Mm -hmm. um, it's really inexpensive. Uh, people, when they buy it, they love it. Uh, people don't know about it, and mm -hmm. then they hear about it, and then they buy it, and then they love it. But it hasn't been updated in part because at the time it was launched, the existing iPhone SE was almost too good. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like, if they had updated it, there would have been no reason to buy a 7. Right. So updating that small inexpensive iPhone with potentially more modern components, you know, will, um, yeah, sure, iPhone, Apple's gonna do something really cool and fancy at the iPhone 11 for $1,000, but um, as you've been getting the picture, I like affordable phones. And you know, that $400 iPhone with modern up-to-date components, I think will just like fly off the shelves. And now do you think it will retain the same form factor? I hope so. I love the tiny iPhone. Mm -hmm. I think there's a lot of people out there, once more it's a niche, right. you know, who like the tiny iPhone. Maybe they'll make it tall and narrow, like 10, but smaller, but you know, a small, tall, narrow phone. I don't right. know. Um, I mean, the thing is, I like actually, a mini iPhone 10. I like the design of it. Uh, it just, it, it looks 
just out of place in Apple's lineup. It does look out of time a little bit. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So maybe they'll make it like a mini iPhone 10. You know, wouldn't that be cool? Um, and so we also have Motorola in the mix. Yeah, in that, um, <coughs> as we were saying earlier, Motorola is just Motorola is just hitting home run after home run with their mid-range phones. And I think the G6, this year's G phone, mm -hmm. is going to be amazing. I think it's going to, uh, for instance, take. It's it's definitely going to have dual cameras. It's going to bring dual cameras down to. Uh, I mean, there are other dual camera phones at $200. I'm right. the you know Honor 7X and all mm -hmm. that. Um, so there are dual camera phones at $200, but it's going to do clean Android on all the carriers with a, a good dual camera interpretation. You know, probably a Snapdragon 630. Like, it's kind of, when I think Moto G6, I think not necessarily radical, but like making all the smart decisions. Mm -hmm. um, so... All these things we will probably be seeing in the next few weeks, months, uh, yeah. basically over the course of the year. But the biggest news will be starting next week at CES. Yes. Yeah. Um, so CES, we're definitely going to see some new phones. So what are some of the things that you think will be coming out of CES? We already mentioned that we'll probably see the Mate 10 Pro for yeah. AT&T and Yeah. So we're not going to see we're not going to see the S9. Mm -hmm. We're not going to see the G7. Mm -hmm. Okay. Those are the two big ones that everyone's waiting for. Uh, there's they have to happen in the first quarter of this year. Right. We're not going to see them. Uh, I'm thinking there's going to be a really brief Samsung S9 teaser. Um, and the S9 will be announced at Mobile World Congress. Mm -hmm. And then if the G7 is also announced at Mobile World Congress, there'll be like this like Samsung LG Kaiju battle, and right. like one of them will be a robot, and the other one will be like a lizard, and yeah. That'll be great. Barcelona, end of February. Mark your calendar. Um, but uh, along with Huawei, um, I think there'll be some Sony announcements. Mm -hmm. And I never talk about Sony, because nobody buys Sony phones. I mean, they're nice. They're just never particularly exciting. Yeah, so like, what can Sony do to up the excitement level of their phones? What can Sony do to actually get people to buy their phones? Right. There's going to be some new Sony announcements. I bet Sony will do that thing where they announce themselves as the first Snapdragon 845 phone, but it isn't coming out until May. Mm -hmm. You know, just to, to, to get the buzz. Right. Um, I'm also really curious about, uh, there, there's, there's going to be, uh, it's going to be a BlackBerry Motion announcement for the US. That's just a, a it's a, it's a touchscreen BlackBerry that's available in the rest of the world. Mm -hmm. Maybe, maybe the next gen of this, be interested to see that. Um, I'm also really interested in talking to ZTE about the Axon 8. Because the Axon 7 was like, what, two years ago? Uh, yeah, but I mean, even over the time, it's remained one of our favorite affordable mid-range Android phone. Exactly. And like if ZTE can do um, if ZTE can do with the Axon 8 what they did with the Axon 7, mm -hmm. they can be to that higher mid-range what Motorola is to that lower mid-range. Right. They can be to that like $500 range mm -hmm. the obvious choice. And so uh, in, in in a time when people I think are a little like uh, like uh, disillusioned with OnePlus, for instance, mm -hmm. people loved OnePlus, but like the OnePlus 5T, um, a lot of people are just like, yeah, it's a little expensive for what you're getting, right. you know, or maybe it's just like not cheap for what you're getting. Mm -hmm. But I don't hear the kind of thrill around the OnePlus 5T that you heard around the OnePlus One, the OnePlus Two, right? You know, absolutely. Um, even though the OnePlus Two had those overheating problems, um, so. Yeah, so ZTE could really, like the Axon 8, could really, really ignite people at that $500 point, mm -hmm. but if it exists, we haven't heard anything about it. Right. Um, any questions out there? All right, so next week is CES. Sasha, yeah. you will be there along with many, many other people in PC uh, Labs. Yeah, I don't know what you guys will be doing back here in New York, but uh, hopefully you'll be putting something on Facebook uh, around then. I'm sure there will be plenty of videos. Uh, I know you'll be taking some good photos and yep. pictures. Uh, so check back next week for all of our CES coverage. And thanks for tuning in Dialed In, and we will see you again soon.